followed by long, hard drought. Whatever it faces, the camel plugs on relentlessly, taking everything in its stride. When this car crashed into a camel in India, there's no doubt which came off worse. There's something magnificent about the defiant resilience of a camel. Holy cow! And here it is. A camel carrying a car up a hill. It can carry loads that would break a horse's back. It can easily travel 50 kilometers a day and has clocked over 55 kilometers per hour. This was something I had to try for myself. Hey, good boy. There's a story of how a few years back there was a race across the outback between a camel and a horse. Now the horse won by a few hours, but it died that night of exhaustion. The camel, though, made that same journey back home the very next day. A horse and a camel both have three gates. Well, whenever a horse trots, this guy instead goes pacing, like this. Right legs, left legs, right legs, left legs, alternating all the time. It's this pacing gait that allows camels to stretch their legs far with each stride, efficiently covering lots of ground without risking their legs colliding. This is kind of fun. The camel also has another gait. Like a horse, it can do a full gallop. Though this is an endurance creature, if it wants to get up at this speed, it can. Woohoo! Go, Raj! Are you ready? We're going to drag that away. You've got to cut it off first. Oh, out of the flies. Okay, do you need a hand? To investigate how the camel's able to travel such vast distances across sandy terrain, we're going to look at how survival in the desert has shaped its leg. Okay. That's a big leg. We're away from the flies. Wow. The ancestor of the camel had hooves. The camel's soft toes are a recent adaptation for walking in the desert. Okay, two toes, two nails. Would these be considered hooves? Would this be a cloven hoof? You call it a foot. No, it's not a, not a cloven foot because it has a common pad together. So this these. is the ankle here. This is the foot. That corresponds to our ankle. And these are the just two to these middle two toes then, just like that. Yeah, that's it. This, this, is, this is a hell of a sole of a foot, isn't it? It's a keratinized pad, uh, similar to the, the pads on a dog's foot. And this foot, this keratin, is expandable. When the foot comes down, it will expand like this, which is handy in soft going, because it means that there's more bearing surface. Hidden inside the camel's foot are some extreme shock absorbers. There's the pad. Yeah. Okay, see, they're almost like two eggs, these pads, aren't they? Egg shapes. That's right. They do. Look at that. That's perfect. Look at that. <laughs> and here's the other one. They're really, really squishy. I mean, they're almost like silicon implants. <laughs> Gel insoles. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But <laughs> and each one of these pads is directly underneath one underneath of the toe one of the toes. Yeah. Yeah. The weight of the camel bears down on just two toes in each foot. Underneath each one is a cushion. This flattens out, absorbing the shock and balancing the animal on unsteady ground. I just want to open this up a little bit better so we can see it. The last adaptation we're going to look at is how the legs have evolved for long distance desert travel. Okay, let's just rotate this up 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, so now we can see the Achilles tendon here, this huge, great tendon it's pretty movable now not much tension on it if you start to flex that joint 
It's actually quite springy. Okay, so just bring it, bring it back, Joy, from to full flexion. That's really taut now, that Achilles tendon down here. So lots of energy stored in that. And let go. Wow, and it kicks backwards. <laughs> it's incredibly... It practically threw my hand off. It's incredibly strong. And this kind of rubber band anatomy in the camel's leg is what helps it save energy when it's wandering around in its environment. It's extraordinary, amazingly powerful. By storing energy in leg tendons, the camel can save almost half the work that the muscles would have to do when it's pacing. It saves energy and stays cooler, holding back its stores for the next round in its constant battle with the desert. The leg, like every part of this beast's anatomy, is a response to living in an empty, boiling, deadly land. The camel's success story here in Australia is certainly controversial, but I can't help but admire the fact that these guys are thriving so well left to their own devices. After all, it's not their fault that evolution's prepared them so perfectly for life in such a harsh and hostile environment. The desert environment has carved the DNA into exactly the right shape to build camel bodies which survive in this most difficult of environments. Kipling's just so story, how the camel got its hump, makes the camel out to be lazy. The camel is not lazy, the camel is frugal, it's economical, it's tough. The camel is a triumph of Darwinian evolution. And Inside Nature's Giants continues next Tuesday at 8. Tomorrow night, the life-saving stories of 9-11 from the hero's own mouth, the fireman's story at 9. Next tonight, though, Seven Dwarves. <laughs>